in that connection to anything loving, what are we doing other than connecting to the fundamental reality of that non-dual truth? In spiritual circles, we so often end up talking about things that sound way out there on the fringes of philosophical or spiritual discussion and non-duality and things like that. But the truth of it is that we touch those things, every single one of us touches those things almost daily. Sometimes we try to put the, that truth into poetic or rather elevated sounding terms and talk about things like the lack of an individuated self inside and if there's no separation there as an individuated self then that reality must instead be something that is not separated and therefore whole and if it's whole then it's not broken it's not missing anything if it's not missing anything then there can't really be any sense of a lack in it or want or need and without those things, it's essentially impossible for there to be fear. And without fear, the natural default setting simply ends up as something peaceful. And if it is so very peaceful, or in its very peacefulness, it's only natural that out of that peacefulness comes something essentially loving, something that's kind, gentle, probably generous and forgiving, but ultimately peaceful and essentially loving. So no matter in what kind of elevated or poetic terms we might try to express that, it still simply comes down to that fundamental reality inside of that lack of separation. Sure, in this daily world, it seems like there is separation all around us all the time, including the fact that most of the time we relate to this world as if we are in fact a separated self, an individual. And yet if we peel back the layers and peel back the layers and look and look and look again, it becomes possible to see that that ends up as an erroneous assertion. And again, that, that, that true lack of separation can can be difficult to put into words. But if something is truly not separated, if there is no separation at all, and there is no lack, want, or need, and everything is of perfect peace and wholeness and oneness, and that essential lovingness flows forth from that, well, we can certainly see that that's, that perfect oneness is distinct from this seemingly separated world. That's how the fact that the separated world could be deemed an illusion can be seen. If that fundamental truth is oneness, then this separatedness must not be true. And that's where it sounds like it gets complicated and twisted and difficult to wrap our minds around, but, but every single person on this earth, even the most wretched, can on some level connect with some moment, some experience within them in which there was something loving that they experienced. Whether it came to them or flowed from them, there was some moment of some kind of connection to something loving. And just like that non-dual truth, just like that wholeness and that oneness, that we cannot seem to place here in this world. We cannot locate that oneness in a specific place. That's because it is outside of the limitation of space. And because we can't seem to locate that moment in time either, we can see that that wholeness and that oneness operates outside of time. That's how we can say it is eternal. But if any one of us looks in our own experience at anything that was truly loving that came to us or flowed from us, we can see that, that that lovingness was also impossible to locate. We cannot say that it was here or there. We can think of some loving act that took place, perhaps, but where was the fundamental love behind that? Where, where could that have been located in space? It becomes impossible to do so. And so we can see that love is itself outside of that limitation of space. 
The same with time. If we think of someone that we love deeply long ago passed away, and we can still feel that love for them, just as full and rich as it ever was. And that's the kind of experience that can show us that love also seems to exist outside of time. And if it's outside of that limitation of time, then there is something about it that is in fact eternal. And so rather than talking about highfalutin philosophical concepts of non-dual truth, reality with a capital R, it's possible instead to simply talk about love. And far more than talk is, is the meaning that we find when we simply connect to that lovingness. Because in that connection to anything loving, what are we doing other than connecting to the fundamental reality of that non-dual truth that is outside of time, outside of space, beyond anything illusory? And in that sense, it is what is most fundamentally real, which is why it can be so incredibly solid. May you touch that rock of truth and carry it with you into the busy doings of this busy, tumultuous world. Peace be with you. Maybe I'll see you on the trail. Here's walking in spirit, my friends.